This is the stock one. It's just painted up and this one is aluminum. This one is obviously much lighter than this one. This one has... Oh no. We're on the side of the road. This is usually fairly frightening. Hey, how's it going? I'm back and I've got quite a bit of the engine back together. I put the clutch that I want onto the rear engine. So this is the rear clutch that I always prefer because this one is in the best shape. And I also have a heavy flywheel attached to it. I like having, having the heavy flywheel in the rear to have more torque and building boost quicker because when I'm drifting and I have the clutch in and I'm revved up to four or five grand, and I drop the clutch, I have all that weight from the, the flywheel, so I have more inertia to spin the tires when I want to. Because if I had a lightweight flywheel like I have in the other one, which is seven pounds, this one's like 20, so it's lot, a lot more likely to spin, which is exactly what I want, and build boost better, because the revs don't go up as quick, it makes more load, makes more the turbo spin more. So, got that on, you didn't need to see me do that. Got the distributor on, I cleaned that baby up. And now I'm on this side, I'm timing up the engine and putting the pulleys on. So this is an aftermarket aluminum pulley. Very, very sexy. And it has a also smaller circumference here. So it spins the pulleys slower. That can also be good for having less RPM on your alternator, less RPM on your power steering, that type of thing. This engine is going into the back. So it doesn't have anything attached to the pulleys except for the water pump and alternator. So I'm definitely gonna put this on to the rear engine, but I tried to fit it up and it would not fit and I will show you why. All right, this is the stock one. It's just painted up and this one is aluminum. This one is obviously much lighter than this one. This one has rubber in between the actual pulley and here. So there is a chance of this blowing up. That is a downfall. Another downfall is it's heavy. So you got to spin that weight up. And this one doesn't have that. So that is definitely a benefit for sure. So I'm probably going to stick with this one. Anyways, the reason why this one doesn't fit, we'll flip them over. Not too, too much different, except this one has a carved out seam in here and this one's just a flat sheet of aluminum. So the problem with this is there was actually parts of the block in here spinning with it. That has nowhere to go. So to make this fit, I'm actually gonna have to take an angle grinder to my engine. So that's gonna be kind of awkward because I'm gonna have to pull out all the redneck inside of me to take an angle grinder to the block. <laughs> kind of weird, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna make it fit. I don't have time to uh, look at forums and see how other people have done it. I'm just gonna grind all this out right here and then grind these um, four um, fins and it should fit, I'll see. I cut out a piece right here, here, and then these four um, little fins here. It should fit on now. She's on. Damn. That's pretty cool. 
That wasn't hard. That took like 10 minutes. So that's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna take it apart and time up the engine first before I put this on because that's kind of stupid. Oh, now she's jammed on there, but I'll get her off. All right, the belt's on. I just use a stock pulley to help myself adjust the crank so I can take it off very easily. Easy on, easy off. So the way I do this is I put the belt on, not even pay attention to the orientation and everything, and get the crank to the center. There's a little knot right there and a big arrow pointing to it. Very simple. That has to be dead center obviously and then up here here's the left cam and there is a little point right here very hard to see but that is the point you're eyeing it up to just like that and that is the dot that you're lining up with that so that one's good then over here on your right cam you have another tip just like right there very small and then you line up that line to it as well so the trick here is, is to get the, the crank straight get it tight all the way up here to where it's gonna be accurate with this notch so there's no slack here so it's I've got it pretty tight it's not like sl sloppy like like if I release this which I don't want to do because I have it pretty good so I've got cranked, so I do the crank first, then I do the left cam, and then do the right. So when you're trying to move the, the cam pulley, you just get a 17 on there, and then you go left or right, whatever way you wanna go. And since the belt's on there, you kinda have to move it around the pulley because you're trying to move it left. Say I was trying to move this left, I'd move the pulley left, and then I'd push the belt around and if it was tight here, I'd pull the belt from around here, give the slack to here, so then I can move it. So once you've got it tight from here to here to here to here, then you can probably put your um, tensioner in there. I don't even put mine in usually until I've got it close, and then I install it. And then I can do the last double take, make sure everything's good, put it in, and then pull the pin here. All right, time to double check. There's my center line in the center. Left cam, with the line out there. Right cam, with the line out there. Sweet, got my tensioner all on. Tensioner's released and we're good to go. So now I can put on my pulley and see if I have a belt that's small enough for it. Got the pulley on, got my gator back belt on. It's nice and tight. Tensioner's on to the timing belt. This is pretty much ready to go other than putting the alternator on and all that good stuff later on once I'm ready to put it into the back of the car. So I'm just gonna clean up everything here, put the intake on, put it under the bench or somewhere out of my way for now so I can continue on with the steering rack 
in the front engine. All right, that's it for this episode. Got that engine all plugged in, ready to go. All I need to do is get a tranny ready for it, alternator on it, all that good stuff, um, then wiring, then she's good to go. That's for another day though. I'm gonna do the front first. So in the next episode, I am going to be taking this transmission apart and making sure it's up to snuff, making sure that the teeth are on the gears, making sure there's no sh like crap in the bottom, so. I don't think there's going to be a problem. I think the, um, the magnet moved, but we'll see. All right. Have a good one. If this video gets 50 likes, I will do a burnout in my shop once I get the front engine running.